right, up this week, uh, A Quiet Place. Now, before we get into it, because sure enough, I talked. I was sure there was going to be some controversy yep. surrounding this film, and uh, of course, because we have to ruin all the things, it is now. It's offended people. <laughs> before we get into that, uh, right away, the rating, we both give this a mugs up. Mugs up. Two mugs up, sure. uh, A Quiet Place. Wholeheartedly. Uh, absolutely. We both enjoyed it. Uh, I'll get into what I liked about it, what I didn't. Basically, I will say this. There could be some spoilers here. We're going to try and avoid it, mm -hmm. but we can't make any promises. No. Because the, se the second we do issue a spoiler, it's going to be just lighten up the comments section. But if we, you haven't seen it by now, you're... No, well, there are plenty yeah. of people who haven't seen it by now. I don't know. I don't know if it gets to China or not. I have no idea. Probably not. I have no idea. But uh, you can leave your comment. What did you think of the film? If you liked it, if you didn't, and are you aware of the controversy surrounding it? Let's bring it up. Sven Computer, the controversy now, people not necessarily thrilled with what they see as a pro-gun message, pro-life message, uh, the regressive <laughs> politics. They hate of the all film. the things. This is just, and I knew it was coming because as soon as I walked out of the film and we talked about this. Yep. All of these criticisms, by the way, from from the left and these blogs. And here's the thing, Krasinski's not a he's he's, he's a liberal, and so is his mm -hmm. wife Emily Blunt. So you know they'll probably be on an apology. I think she it. said some things about like not like in America before. I think she yeah she's, she's been, been pretty open her. about it. Yeah. So you don't want to flip flop on whether you, you you don't like stars and you don't like their their art or their performances based on their politics. The point is, this is not something that they expected. I don't think they set out to make a movie no. like this. That being said, if you're looking for it, all of those criticisms would be valid. Yeah. And we were talking about this. The film, um, yeah, let, let's let, let's cycle through them. It absolutely, for people who've criticized it for being too pro-gun, um, it is. It could be seen as very pro-gun. Namely because how else do you kill giant monster creatures with superhuman hearing? If the film were anti-gun, it would be a pretty short movie. So when you watch this film, I was watching it with my uh, producer, Johnny Boy. I said, yeah, this film does seem uh, does seem pretty pro-gun. It absolutely does. If you're watching it, you can... There's no other way to take it. Jared, you can come... We can uh, roll those clips there afterwards. But uh, what did you... Did you see this when you watched the film? I did. I, and I, I was really aware, like, the whole way through. I'm like, there's so many angles they could have taken to get, get out of it, too. Yeah. Like, the, the, the pro-life message. And, like, they didn't have to have a baby. That's another one, too. It was absolutely pro-life. Pro so, yep. spoiler alert... Emily Blunt is pregnant, and that yeah. so this is a major spoiler. So major spoiler alert: three, two, got it. Okay, good. She opts to give birth uh, while there's one of these in this sort of I guess you'd say I guess it's the climax of the film. Yeah, giving birth with this monster thing in the house, having to stay quiet, going through the pain of protecting her 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 kin, and uh, actually they build a box for the baby yep. to live in, and they give it a whole gas oxygen tank so that the, the baby, if it cries, it won't be hurt, and these people won't be killed. Kind of reminiscent of sort of babies who would cry in the Holocaust. You've heard those stories. Yep. The very first scene in the film is at a pharmacy. They pharmacy, could have taken they, they a litany of poison. <laughs> poison. <laughs> and so I'm like, th th there's a million ways they could have gotten out of that situation, and but they didn't. Right. Which, I mean, there's a lens up to the movie, sure, but it's it seemed intentional. To well, me. it overall can certainly be seen as a pro-life message. Uh, it, it certainly, listen, this is kind of more so it's toss and heaping coals on the head, salt on the wound, pro-family, pro-Christian. I, I don't think it's necessarily actively those things. Again, none of this is proactive, but they do pray at dinner and it's not mocked, which is no. very rare for a film. So I could see how, again, we're watching it going like, oh, they're just saying a prayer before dinner and uh, that's it. Yeah. Whereas I can that's see someone at Salon watching it going, they're saying a prayer before dinner and that's it? There better be Allah on the other line. There better be a commentary about how pedophiles aren't monsters on the next <laughs> reel. When I see those burn marks, I want to see some kind of... Gender non-conforming pedophile. Um, so, and it was pro-family just just through the, the mere fact that the father was taking care of the family and yeah. this was a tightly knit family. So, yeah, pro-gun, pro-life, pro-family, I can see it. Certainly pro-patriarch. Absolutely. This is one thing, absolutely. This is a, it, it, it is almost, I mean, I could see how the left could see it, almost comical. Uh, this is the, the quintessential patriarchal family Strong system. Strong father figure. It's never seen as a negative, by the way. No. And here's something else that's very important to note. It's still a very strong female character. Absolutely. This isn't a woman, this isn't a fake, you know, atomic blonde hitting someone with a stiletto, which would do absolutely zero other than piss somebody off. This is a strong female character who, spoiler alert, takes out some of the monsters, is basically a mama bear protecting her children, but also... Goes through hell the, herself, too. Goes through hell absolutely herself and comes out stronger, and, but, but is submissive, kind of in like the biblical sense, to uh, her husband. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that the husband says, listen, I'm going to go do this, get this done, take care of the kids this way, then I'm going to go do this. I need you to stay here and do A, B, C, and D. If she were a feminist, it'd be a short movie. <laughs> if the wife were to question everything the husband says, the pay it would be a short movie. And at no point do you sense that there's any kind of animosity mm -hmm. because of a strong father figure who's trying to provide. No. And it's not as though she's weak and she's a secondary character. This is what we call, as, as Christians, complementarianism. Yep. They're both equally important but they serve two different purposes. Mm -hmm. And I can absolutely see how if someone on the left were watching this film, they would see a, a pro-patriarchy message because 
it's kind of there. Um, and this is one thing I will say. This is kind of proof positive that I, I've talked about this, that conservatives and, and sort of right-wing ideas make for better films. If you think about all the things that make the, the – look at the top movies of all time. I can bring that up. Conflict, good and evil, justice, uh, personal responsibility, overcoming adversity. These are themes that we've always talked about on the right that we believe in. And these are themes that people really resonate with if you look at a lot of the films that have done really well when Hollywood can't fully understand it. This is why there's now a disconnect between the awards films and the films that people go and see. Now, there is popcorn crap. Sure. As well, absolutely, and I would not say this a is a lot of it. I would not say this is popcorn crap. No, this is a good film, but uh, that's I think why there's an increasing disconnect between the entertainment industry and people in the United States. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. Um, can you imagine for a second a film like this uh, if the characters in the movie acted the way leftists advocated? So you have self sacrifice, for example, from the main main uh, actor John Krasinski. I forgot his name in the film. Basic white guy name yep. to save his children and his baby would have been way easier to abort the baby. Of course, uh, if there's no good and evil, no conflict, who cares about the film? Um, this, these films like this, the films that people really resonate with, it's, it's not only about overcoming adversity and personal responsibility, but it's about overcoming adversity. It's about, it's, it's human nature. This is kind of an irony that we've talked about where people who are upset about this patriarchy or people talk about gender societal conditioning. Films are very reflective. They're supposed to kind of play on emotional strings. That's what they're designed to do. Particularly a scary movie. Fear is a very basic primal emotive response. It's a very visceral emotive response uh, to an emotion. And, and then it translates to actions, how people act out of fear. And in this case, um, th this is this. The only people trying to recondition anyone are the people saying that all of gender, that all of our basic instincts are societally conditioned. The people trying to recondition are people saying, "Oh, listen, toxic masculinity." Like with this this film. <laughs> no, that's this is very basic. A man wants to go out and sacrifice himself for his children. A man wants to go out, be a hunter gatherer, protect his children. And guess what? A mom wants to protect and nurture. Yeah. This is this is why it resonates with people because you watch it and you feel something really deeply. Going, "Oh my God, what if that were my kid? Oh my gosh, what if you're a kid? Going, what if that were my dad? Or you're going, "Oh my God, what if I were pregnant?" Women watch it and go, "Oh my God." she's pregnant and they feel that it resonates with them and we're tro we're told from the left that this is societal conditioning while they are in fact trying to recondition us they're trying to recondition us from our mo most basic instincts you go to you find the hutu tribesmen out in the plains of whatever country that doesn't even exist so don't try and fact check that <laughs> you're going to see fathers protecting hunting uh -huh. gathering and mothers being nurturing and mothers being violently protective of their babies and that's what you see in this film yeah absolutely um and i think it's uh I, I think you're going to see people look for a groundswell of unhappy people retroactively giving negative reviews now and probably an apology tour from John Krasinski and, and, and Emily Blunt uh, because, it, like I said, you see all it takes is one review. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you find eight. Well, like, uh, yeah, today's, you know, backstreet blogs are tomorrow's HuffPo front, front, front page. So right. you, you, I think you're going to see that start small, start little, and then just explode into Yeah, exactly. Where people are gonna go, well, you know what, they might have a point, and then they're gonna have breakout panels, yeah. you know, about about the the the, the, the PTSD that part. occurred from people <laughs> watching this because they felt as though this woman it was she was obligated to bear the child. Like it really does, it does hit on that. And I will say, you know, one film that is just the most blatantly pro-life film uh, that I've seen in a long time is uh, Brawl on Cell Block 99 with Vince Vaughn. Yeah. I can't believe that that was an accident. But I do think it's a lot easier for uh, leftists to accidentally make conservative films. You, you don't really see the opposite. Again, it's, no. it's really easy to make a film that deals with conflict, personal responsibility, that deals with overcoming adversity. Look at every single big film that people love. That's the, this, this is the triumph of the human condition. Mm -hmm. That's what makes movies interesting. Successful liberals, if you look at John Krasinski or Emily Bunt, they're liberals. They haven't lived the way, with the views they've espoused. No. Guarantee you John Krasinski got rejected. No, no. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a tough racket to be an actor like that. That guy failed, picked himself up by his bootstraps, and uh, is a rugged individualist. He just doesn't necessarily believe that everybody else can do it. Yeah, no, nobody who's been successful lives by the rules of No, the you can't. You can't. It's, you can't. it's impossible. It's, it's, it's self-defeating. Yeah, exactly. Time. And people, people want to be, people create, this is another human instinct. People create uh, teams, people create villages, they want to have communities, but they want to be independent. Human beings naturally do not want to be dependent on another human being. That's not a triumphant story. It's not a triumphant story for someone to walk in and get a handout and that's the end of the film. It's a triumphant story for the man to overcome adversity or someone to not overcome adversity and someone else to carry that torch as you see in this film. So I will say about this movie, just as far as um, why I really liked it, it was, it was scary. It was paced well. Yep. The acting was really good. It was well directed. But I will say this: it is absolutely a series of gimmicks after another um, that are very effective. I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way, but you remove that and you remove the ability for the film. Gimmick sounds a little pejorative, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, it, I, mean I, I definitely mean it in a way. Like someone sat down, and was like, "Okay, how can we kind of manipulate the audience with these these? I would say crutches a little bit, but they they use them well." I'm so silent. I want to stab people around me eating popcorn. 
Mm. I want to stop myself eating popcorn. Yeah, I so can imagine. quiet. Yeah. Um, what did you, so what, what, any thoughts? You just beyond uh, yes or no? Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Okay. I'm right. in the clouds. Thanks. Drugs. I pre appreciate, appreciate your contribution there, not gay, Jared. Um, no, I do think that uh, absolutely it's a film worth seeing. It's kind of gimmicky. It's like, you know, you know the basic premise, right? Of course, people have to be quiet. Okay, then you find out why. And then each scene is, oh, okay, maybe there's a flooding scene. Maybe, there's, oh, now there's a su superhuman hearing. Oh, now, oh, maybe this person doesn't have any hearing. And so as a, it is a use of gimmicks for skins, but I will tell you, what makes you really appreciate a film like this is when you watch it and then you go wa watch a terrible scary movie. Oh, yeah. You go and watch a scary movie that doesn't work at all. You realize just how hard it is to do. So uh, two mugs up for A Quiet Place. Hey, did you enjoy this video? Here's the thing, you're, over, you're here, this is the end of the, so we don't care because you already watched it, but if you really didn't like it and you want to justify it, leave a comment below telling us why you didn't like the video. And if you liked us, let us know and uh, subscribe to the channel because that lets the overlords at YouTube know that, uh, you know what? You're all right.